Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to another build video. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the mammoths. The mammoths are, it's going to be kind of quick video because mammoths are pretty simple. Mammoths are tanks, it's my term for tanks. Uh, sometimes you'll hear mega, that's another term I heard from filthy robots, so I'm just kind of to say that myself, mega's a good word. I chose mammoth because I think it invokes powerful imagery. So, uh, I like to build, let's get right into it really, I like to build um, battleforged mammoths i don't think you can really do nimble because like these guys just got out of a noble fight look at the shit cut shit kicking they took this is a lot of fucking armor damage from a, a noble fight so you, you know you can't <laughs> you can't really do um nimble like what nimble armor are you gonna wear that can take this fucking beating like nothing um where is it this is this is a 202 Minus 8 armor with an attachment. You can get 200 minus 8 with no attachments if you max roll this. This is the best light armor in the game. So, realistically, you could do 202 minus 8. And then have a minus 7, like, 160 helmet. And then you'd get your, like, perfect nimble. But that's kind of shit. And I think, um, you can actually afford to all just use Battleforge with a lot of the, the stam you're going to have. Because... Mammoths do not give a shit about their attack, uh, their attack at all. So, uh, let's go into good backgrounds for mammoths, and then we'll talk about these skills. So, good backgrounds are um, like farmhands. Farmhands um, are good because they have high HP and fatigue to begin with. So, if you get a good, if you get a farmhand with triple star, that's what this guy is with just triple star. They don't have really good melee defense, but they have the high HP and the high stamina to where they'll be able to take hits like this. Uh, other good things, uh, thieves are really good. Uh, thieves have low stam and low HP, but they do have really good starting melee defense. So a good early mammoth would be like a thief. I don't think they're going to hold up to other ones in the late game, but that totally works. Uh, next, I have an adventurous noble here. Which, uh, he started with low HP, so I took Colossus. He gets up to 96. That's really good. He had really high melee defense. He is tiny as well. Um, and then he had good stam. And then the good thing about Adventure Snowballs is they have high starting resolve. Which means you don't really have to pump resolve that much. Because resolve is one of the four main stats of a mammoth. Now, also, um, Hedge Knights are really good. Hedge Knights are basically fantastic in my other campaign. Uh, my first one, I have two of my three mammoths are actually hedge knights. So that's really, uh, they're, they start with like 105 to 110 stam, really good HP. They start with good melee skill, so you never, you don't level melee skill, but they just have it, so that's a plus. They start with good melee defense, and they have decent enough resolve, so they make really good mammoths as well. Uh, other things, uh, I found that sword masters, I'm not a fan of sword masters. In general because they're kind of they have low hp low stam um that, that's where they have low hp and low stam like pitifully low both but um this guy right here is let's look at this with a 20 this is a, a regular heater shield he has 94 let's give him this one this one's where's my 26 one 26 101 fucking melee defense ridiculous the the Swordmaster can get up to 20 starting melee defense, which this guy had. He had 20 starting melee defense in triple start, which is oh, like, like, what the fuck? Yeah, you can see here, 58 base melee defense. I don't think I can, let me just throw a two-hander. Oh, I can't because I don't have the inventory space for it. Someone's got to do it. All right. Uh, here, let's just, 69 melee defense. Like, oh my gosh. That's amazing. So, uh, those are the backgrounds I would go for. You know, like, Farmhand. <laughs> that was a little tangent. But Farmhand, Adventure Snowball. Uh, an Adventure Snowball for the Resolve. And then, um... But really, you just want high melee defense. So, like, Squires could work. You could get a Militia to work. You could get a Gladiator to work. Uh, cell swords could work. They're kind of in the same thing with adventurous nobles, except they don't have the resolve. So I don't know about that. But uh, really, just anything you can get that has good 
melee defense. Because melee defense is your key. I don't know why I'm going around there. So, going to the four stats you need, you want melee defense, obviously. So you see you have triple starred here, triple starred here, double starred, and tiny here, so which is a plus five. So, you have that. They are to take hits, so you don't care about melee, def or melee attack at all. Do not care. You want to have some so enemies don't just run through your zone of control. Sometimes I've heard that you throw a three-handed flail on there, which gives you three chances to stop an enemy from moving through zone of control. That could be smart. But I prefer to have uh, spears. And then this guy I give a sword just because I don't have uh, three goblin spears. So Then you have HP, obviously, because you have to take a lot of damage. You have to be able to just take hits. Then you have stamina, because you need to be able to wear super heavy armor. And then you have resolve. Resolve for when you take those big hits, or for when enemies walk next to you, or um, even just shit like geists, like just uh, things that will proc. You need to not fail those like random morale checks. You know the ones where the enemy just walks up to you and you go to wavering. You need to not fail those. Um, I have previously taken Fortified Mind, and I found that I don't need it. Uh, 59 is kind of low. 68 is up there. 82 is really good without Fortify Mind. He's a drunkard. I would like to get rid of that, but nevertheless. And then, uh, if you do the arena buff, you will get a... Does anyone have him? No, I guess not. But you do get a plus 5 um, resolve, up to plus 10 resolve, by fighting in the arena. And every single time I go into the arena, I bring a Mammoth, because they're just so great for crowd control. I think Mammoths are an excellent and actually a crucial way to get into the end game. I don't think you can do a lot of the end game comment content without um, really good mammoths. I'm sure I'm wrong, but in my experience, I definitely need them. Let's get into the uh, the perk tree here. So we start with student, obviously. Next, um, I started, these are my first two. I took steel brow and then uh, this guy had low HP because he's an adventurous noble. So I took Colossus and I found that Steel Brow isn't as necessary. Steel Brow is great for RNG, but and my my other reason for Steel Brow is this is a sword master. And he uh he like, you know, they start with like 40 something hit points and he is up to 84. Like so he got to like 80 roughly um when he hit level 11. So without Colossus. So you don't necessarily and this guy has 87 without Colossus. So you don't really need to take um, Colossus. Granted, it's nice to have 100 HP, but I, I I, would probably take Colossus over Steel Brow, but I think you could really go either way. I mean, you need the hit points. So if you can't get those hit points, you go uh, Steel Brow. And now, uh, just to sidetrack a little bit, the reason I, I think the Swordmaster is okay is because every single level up, he has 59 because he has Fearless, so the resolve is fine. I took melee defense, stamina, HP. Every single roll. Did not matter what it was. That's what I took. So his hit points ended up being okay. His stamina ended up being okay. Even though they start low because of his, um, his, uh, whatchamacallit, his background. I never had to level that melee skill. Which, you know, when you're taking an attack character, you also want to level the melee skill. Not having, um, having, having fearless means I didn't have to level resolve. So I could actually just level those three, which is really good. Anyway, next, uh, we take Rotate, then we take Brawny, which are staples. I then take Underdog, and then I take Battleforged. Those are really, uh, I think I've made it clear that you just kind of need that armor. You, I don't think uh, Nimble is really going to go for you. So then I take Taunt. You can probably take Indomitable and then Taunt. But I like to take Taunt because I like getting Taunt up as soon as possible. But I need my Battleforged to start taking, uh, taking real hits. Then I go, uh, then I go Indomitable, then I go Recover, and then I'm at max level, so then I take Shield Spec, because I'm trying to min-max my melee defense, and I take Gifted. I don't take Adrenaline, um, I have in the past, I don't think it, you wouldn't, because you, you can't, uh, Indom, Recover, Adrenaline Cycle anymore, I was never a fan of that, but you can't do that. And I found that I don't need Adrenaline, I don't, I've gotten, like, probably a thousand days in this in my Battle Brothers career, without using Adrenaline, use it maybe like three times on Mammoths, and I, I, I'm totally fine without it. So I take Gifted, take that MDef roll, take that Stam roll, probably take whatever else I'm lacking here. 
it's really simple. Like this is just the, this is just the uh, the perks that you want. Now uh, for other equipment, you want heavy armor. I wouldn't necessarily give you like this is a 350. This is 325. This is 323. You don't need even like I have 300 armor here. Like we have here, we have 339. We have 351. This is just another 320. But the mammoths won't get hit that much, so you don't actually need to give them your like 322 armor or your 375 armor because they won't get hit enough to really have that die like you know that often like this is just fine in 320 this is just fine in 300 so getting that extra 80 points on someone who actually will get hit a lot like this guy with only 37 melee defense means he has that extra 75 bit of armor to work with which can really save him same thing with the helmets now uh you want a shield i found these legendary sleep bar shields those work fine um normally i would just take a heater shield otherwise I have this kite shield that gives me 20, and it's worth less stand than a heater shield, so I use that. Um, in going into orc fights and chosen fights, I will take... I used to take uh, orc warrior shields, because they had 72 durability. Now I take Sipar shields, just because they offer a little bit more protection. I have a little bit less stam, and they have a good durability. And you take two of them. You take one, and you take the other. So then when the orcs break one, then you just go... Wow, let me re-equip it. Boom. And then you have two shields. So Scavenger is great. The, not Scavenger. The Blacksmith Retinue member is great because he will repair these really good, awesome shields. So, uh, what's next? I think um, Spears, I run three Mammoths. I would recommend having three Mammoths. I think that's really good. Even in a company of 12, I would still run three Mammoths. I think that is um, the way to go. I run Goblin Spears on them. Goblin spears. So I would normally run regular spears, like you know, um, run boar spears. You don't care about their damage, so you don't care about fighting spears because fighting spears cost more fatigue, and you don't give a shit about the damage, so it doesn't matter that they do a little bit more. Militia spears are obviously trash, so don't use those. But I use goblin spears because goblin spears have a fatigue cost of two minus two, which is six more fatigue, or six less fatigue, sorry, than a regular boar spear. So you're saving yourself six fatigue. I don't know if I have. Uh, but like, look at like 92, 98, the six fatigue, that's pretty big. Same thing on this guy, he's a, he's a low stam, uh, mammoth. He has minus two on this sword, and this guy also has minus two in the goblin spear. So you're saving yourself six fatigue, and you still get your spear wall ability. You take spears for spear wall, that is why. Because spear wall is great for zone of control. And then I take the, um, the, I have a bird on one mammoth. I take the bird because I use the bird in zombie fights. And in zombie fights, uh, you want to know where the necromancer is. You want to know if there's guys, you know, whatever. So, you don't really care um, about the stamina. Like, it costs, what, like 15 stam and 3 AP? Like, you know, the mammoth isn't going to do any more than walk forward three tiles anyway. So, like, <laughs> it doesn't matter that he gets to do it. I put the goblin trophy on this guy here. Because in goblin fights, um, you, you know, it takes... it. The amount you break out of the roots depends on your melee skill. And since these guys have low melee skill, that means they will not be able to break roots as frequently. So giving them Goblin Trophy means they don't have to worry about that. And then I give the, uh, I throw everyone else that doesn't have, you know, like a dog or something. I give them a plus resolve trophy. So there we go. Now, if I have a, if I have a typical lineup, let me just... You know, Archer, um, this is kind of a, a fake lineup right here. Just, let's see, uh, Mammoth. Uh, uh, all right, boom. Don't mind this. All right. 11. Okay. So, I have two Spear Mammoths on, this, on each corner, which is great for, um, you know, for... Oh, especially in orc fights, because and it's good for orc fights because then you spear wall on either side and then you for, funnel the the orcs in. In zombie fights, I take the mammoths and I run them out to the side so they can all get surrounded, so the zombies are stuck on them and I don't have to worry about them. If I can get like four zombies stuck on this guy and like five zombies stuck on this guy. That's nine zombies. I don't have to worry about doing shit. Totally fine. Same thing in noble fights. Get a bunch of nobles and bowmen stuck on the mammoths. They just won't do anything else. You can shield wall for days and dominable for days. You never have to worry about it at all. It's perfect. 
uh, in other fight, and then I have the guy here in the middle, just because I really, I, it's safe. It's very safe to have three mammoths that can taunt throughout the whole battlefield. Like, you can have three, you can have up to six taunts at the same time, three indomitables, you know, you can hold up all the unholds, taunt all the chosen, all the orc warriors, all the orc warlords, it's fine. Uh, it's really good. Uh, in my Horrible Hybrids campaign, I'm considering putting whips on them, because I have to have quick hands. So, I will get back, if I have see that that works, I will comment below whether or not whips will work. Maybe put smoke pots on. The premise of that campaign is a challenge run where everyone has to has have, has to have quick hands. So I need to somehow fit quick hands into this build. I will drop gifted. Nope, not taunt. I will drop gifted to do that. Speaking of taunt, taunt is one of the most important skills of this build. You taunt every single battle, which is why you need that high stam. Which is also why I think you need battle forge because you are just taking hits left right and center you are just eating eating hits you taunt enemies to get down shield wall you taunt uh, big scary two-handers and orc berserkers so they don't decimate your other front line you know you taunt enemies so they move forward into uh, your zone of control and away from your squishier guys like if a uh you taunt Barbarians, so they don't rot uh, like chosen, so they don't rotate and hit someone else. You know they do the weird like rotate adrenaline bullshit thing. You taunt necro savants. You taunt everything under the sun. The only things you don't taunt is you don't taunt guys with ranged weapons and you don't taunt whips. Like <laughs> that's really it. Everything else you just taunt. I taunt, 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 taunt all the time. Now I want to say if you want to see gameplay, I won't be able to provide gameplay in this video, but watch literally any Battle Brothers Fight Guide video or any uh, video in my live gameplay and strategy playlist, and you will see mammoths at work. Just any of those videos. I recommend the the orc, the mega orc camps, probably the chosen camps as well. Um, Ancient Undead, that's a good one. Like those uh, nobles as well. Those are four really good examples of how to use mammoths to their full full extent. Um, I don't think it's necessary to provide more gameplay because you can see it in every other video. I always run mammoths in like oh, virtually every single fight ever. I'm running these three mammoths right here. Hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or you have any cons uh, comments about how you would make this build better. Or tell me how nimble would work because I don't think it will. Please comment below. Let me know. I want to say thanks. I actually uh, hit 400 subscribers as of the time of recording. That's that's kind of cool. I was at like fucking 50 over the summer. Now I'm up to 400 since I started posting Battle Brothers stuff. So that's cool. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.